In this problem, we want to look at a projectile that lands at a different height than the height it started from, and it's launched at an angle. So the three kinds of problems, horizontally launched from a height, launched at an angle but landing at the same height, and launched at an angle but landing at a different height, this is the most difficult of the three. Now we're going to solve this particular problem without using a quadratic formula. The quadratic formula will allow us to solve for the whole time in one step, but I'll, I'll deal with that in a, in, in a different video or talk to you in class about it. The problem in this case is a balloon that's launched at 7 meters per second from the top of a building in the 40 degree direction. Just like before, there's some things we want to be able to find. The horizontal velocity, the vertical velocity initial, the time of flight, but now the time up is not going to be the same as the time down. We're going to have to solve for them separately. We're going to want to find the maximum height or maximum altitude, the range, the final horizontal and vertical velocity, the magnitude of the final velocity, and the angle at which it lands. As always, it's good to draw a picture. I have my silly expression if you want to see the big picture. You draw the big picture. So here's a building. And we're launching a projectile at some angle like this. Let's move this, make a little more room. That has an x component of the velocity that's going to depend on the magnitude and the direction that we launch it at. It's going to have a y component. Keep in mind these two are completely independent of one another. So when you're solving for various things, you want to make sure you keep it straight in your head whether you're dealing with the y direction or the x direction. I like to say don't make purple, meaning don't mix up, for example, negative 9.8 for the acceleration if you're doing the x direction. You just have to be really careful about that. Now the path is still going to be a parabola, but it's going to be a little different. The time up is going to be different than the time down. So if it's landing at a lower height, the time down will be more. Still some things we know. We know the velocity in the y direction at the top is zero. We're solving for the range. Let's draw that in. So the first thing I still like to find is the time. I like to do that with the y direction. In fact, in this problem, that's the only way you can do it. It's all the information we have. So an equation that has time in it, where we know the other stuff, would be this one. Now remember, we're dealing with the y direction. It's not a bad idea to put little subscript y's on it. I don't bother to put one in the t because t doesn't really belong to the x or the y. It links the two together. The final velocity here is going to be 0 meters per second. Now, when we put in the initial velocity, we actually don't want 7 meters per second. This is v0. What we need is v0 y. So let's go ahead and get that. v0 y is going to equal 7 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. Again, as always, make sure if you're plugging in degrees, your calculator knows that and is in degree, is in a degree mode, not radian mode, because you get a very different answer if you don't. When you do that, you should get a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. While we're at it, let's just go ahead and get the x component now to 7 meters per second times the cosine of 40 degrees is going to give us 5.36 meters per second. But back to the problem. We're going to plug in an initial velocity of 4.5 meters per second. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time. So time is going to be negative 4.5 divided by negative 9.8, which is going to equal 0 0.459 seconds. Keeping in mind that this is just the time up. Some other pieces of information we can find now that we know the time, we can find the maximum height. One way we could do that is we could use the distance equation. d equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. Notice I keep writing in blue because these are all y components. Not that you have to write in blue. So the distance which we want to know, so if I was to give these letters, 
if I call this height h, that's the 21 meters, and then I call this little h, the height above the top of the building that the projectile travels vertically, um, the d we're looking for here is the little h. So that little h would be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, 4.5 meters per second, times the time just for the way up, which is 0 0.459 seconds, plus 1 half times the acceleration vertically, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times the time up, 0 0.459 seconds squared. When you plug all that in, you should get a height of 1.03 meters, meaning the projectile travels from here up to here. This vertical distance is 1.03 meters. So the overall distance from the top to the bottom is going to be 21 plus 1.03, or 22.03 meters. So we now know that this distance is 22.03 meters. The reason that's helpful is we can actually figure out the time down now. So we're going to do the same thing, the same equation as we did uh, here, but we're going to solve it for time. So if I switch back over to blue, dy is going to be v naught y plus 1 half a t squared, but the dy is actually going to be negative 22.03 meters. The reason I like to have it negative is that when I plug in the acceleration here, and I plug in negative 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning the acceleration is down, well, the displacement is down too. So the signs have to match. It's not critical that this is negative. It's just critical that the direction matches the direction of the displacement. So the time is what we're looking for. So I'll just write that as t squared. And this actually is easy because the initial velocity in the y direction, I forgot to put the t there, uh, is 0. So that makes this much simpler. So t squared is going to equal negative 22.03, excuse me, Oh, pardon me, the program's freezing. Twenty-two point oh three divided by negative four point nine. We're going to take the square root of both sides, and we're going to see that the t down is going to be two point one two seconds. So we now know that the time up is going to be 0 0.459 seconds, and the time down is going to be 2.12 seconds. So the total time, when we add both of those together, is going to be t up plus t down, which is going to be 0 0.459 plus 2.12 seconds, which is going to give us the total time of 2.58 seconds. So we now know the total flight time. The total flight time is what we need to calculate the range. So if I can switch over to the x direction, the range is going to be equal to the initial velocity in the x direction times the time. So the x component of velocity was 5.36 meters per second. The time is only the time on the way. Uh, actually, it's the total time. So we're going to use 2.58 seconds. And that's going to give us a range that is 13.8 meters. So the projectile we know travels 13.8 meters horizontally on the way down. and we know that vertically it goes up 1.03 meters and then comes down 22.03 meters. One other piece we need to solve is to get the velocity when it lands. So first let's get the y component. 
So if this is our picture and it's going like this, we want to figure out what the velocity is right here. So if this is A, B, and C, we want to figure out the velocity at point C. One way you can do this is to use the equation VF equals VI plus AT, and we'll make the top the initial and the bottom the final position. Remember, we're only doing this vertically. So the final velocity in the y direction is what we're looking for. The initial velocity in the vertical direction is zero. The acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time here is just the time down. So this is just the time down according to our picture, 2.12 seconds. And when you do that, you should get a vertical velocity of negative 20.8 meters per second. Now in the x direction, because there's no acceleration horizontally, we know that the final velocity in the x direction is going to be the same as the initial velocity in the x direction, which was 5.36 meters per second. So if we want to get the magnitude of the overall velocity, let's just sketch a little picture. So the velocity goes to the right as drawn at 5.36 meters per second, and it goes down at 20.8 meters per second, which is going to give us a resultant velocity that goes like this. So we want to get both the magnitude and the direction. So to get the magnitude, we're just going to do Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be the 5.36 squared plus 20.8 squared. Take the square root. And that's going to give us a magnitude of a final velocity of 21.5 meters per second. And then we just need to find the direction. So if I want to get theta, these opposite and adjacent as it always is, so you're going to get theta is the inverse tangent of 20.8 divided by 5.36, and that's going to give you a theta of 75.5 degrees. So the overall direction you could say is 75.5 degrees below the positive x-axis, you could probably call it 75.5 south of east. Or you could subtract that from 284 and get 284.5 degrees. So this would be your final direction, and this would be the magnitude. And those are the questions you want to be able to answer with projectiles launched at an angle, landing at a different height.